Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here of the Raptors Digest, breaking down a player that no one's really been talked about in Raptors land. He signed, officially signed on a two-way contract to the to the big team. He's playing in the Raptors Summer League team now. But Justin Champagny Riker, he impressed you and I in the Summer League game we did a live watch along to yesterday. And um, I, this video might be, this video's coming out tomorrow. So two days ago. And he's a guy that really, the Raptors, they love to use their two-way contracts on players that could potentially join and become big players onto the roster. Obviously, Watanabe, he's a guy that's going to be probably an integral piece, at least at the start of the season this year. But Justin Champagny, an interesting story and a guy with a lot of potential, Riker. Yes, and this is going to get posted tomorrow, probably. Yes. Tomorrow yeah. being today that you're listening to it. So that means when you're listening to this, the next Summer League game is going to be tomorrow from when you're listening Tune in to our live watch along, which we're going to be doing absolutely for the full game. So that'll be super exciting. Those are always a hit. But Justin Champagny, Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Panther, played in college, wasn't a phenomenal three point shooter, but for a guy that was six foot six, seven foot wingspan, very comparable to Ishmael Wainwright, gobbled up 11 boards per game, was it Ben? Yeah. 11 rebounds yeah. per game. So this man's pretty crazy, pretty out of position, but an interesting player was promised that he was going to get by an unnamed team in all reports promised that he was going to get drafted and obviously didn't slip out of that 60th spot mm -hmm. and then got almost immediately picked up by the Raptors and yeah. signed to a two way deal. I'll say quickly other notable Pittsburgh Panthers, most recent Cam Johnson on that championship or championship contending Phoenix Suns team, and maybe the biggest name, Steven Adams, but Cam Johnson might eclipse him. So, Champagny, you don't think so? The biggest you don't think name, Steven Adams? Adams? You're Between Steven Adams a and Champagny. Toronto Raptors legend, Aaron well, Gray. <laughs> you're going to disrespect nice. my, our guy, Aaron Gray. The casuals Gray. and the newbies to our podcast. They, they haven't been watching the Raptors for that long to know who Aaron Gray is. Yo, if you go back deep into Aaron Gray's Instagram, he has a, the most classic mirror selfie anyone will ever find on the internet. So, man's just a legend. I would have had it pulled up if uh, if we knew he was getting name dropped on this podcast. But, you know, Pitt legend, very tough conference to play in, I've been told. Obviously, you and I don't follow college basketball too closely, but apparently it's one of the toughest and he was able to put up remarkable numbers, as you mentioned, Riker. And, you know, his most recent season, 18 points per game, steal a block, you know, 1.3 blocks, a little bit more than a block each each way, 11 rebounds for a 6'6 player. I guess he was playing power forward. But, and, you know, his, his big issue that people talked about a lot is his three-point shooting. He's not really up to the a true NBA level three-point shooter just yet, people are saying. 31% in his senior or his, his final season in uh, college basketball. But Riker, summer league debut and his entire summer league career so far at least, shooting 50% from the three-point line. So I know that's how trends and numbers work. Went two for four in his first game with the Toronto Raptors. But Riker, assuming this jump shot, with even without the jump shot, well, we won't speculate too much into the, the growth and potential. We'll look at who he is right now as a player then we'll sort of see because we have a lot of guys with a lot of potential on this squad. Right now, how does he slot into this Toronto Raptors team as a two-way guy? He doesn't slot in. He slots in on the 905 yeah. as okay. a development player because end of the day, I want to be high on this guy. I want to get mm -hmm. in on the hype. But it's really him or Ishmael Wainwright if they're both 6'5", 6'6", mm -hmm. if they're both super lengthy but not really skilled guards. Here's the thing. If you're playing your college career as a power forward, that's not going to fly in the NBA. You're not a six foot six yep. power forward. You're not exactly. PJ Tucker. He doesn't have to build for that. Like Ishmael Wainwright does. You're going to have to be a wing guy. And, you know, yes, on his summer league career, he's a 50 point, 50% 50 three point shooter. But if you just look historically and you can't compare exactly because they play a lot of zone defense longer shot clock, slower pace of play in college. So you're not getting the same shots that you would in an NBA game, but it's hard for me to believe that you're going to go from low 30% to high 30% in a more competitive playing league, playing against the best players in the world. So he's going to need a little bit of time to develop, but this guy, he seems like he's a worker. He's a real workaholic out there, Ben. So 
definitely somebody to keep an eye on that might get developed up along the same same lines that Delano Banton might. Yep. And I think he's a bit further along than a Delano Banton. I think there's really a lot of just fundamental things that they, the Toronto Raptors can work on with Banton. While you know, we could honestly, we'll have some summer league breakdowns and we're doing the live watch alongs. Physically, there are things Banton's doing out there all down the court that you just sort of salivate at as Toronto Raptors fans. So that's an exciting thing with Banton. But again, he's probably one, two years away from being a true NBA guard, which is really going to be the position that sets himself apart. Because defensively, a few blocks per game, some steals and getting to the rim in two steps. That is a... Uh, but and having handles at his height, Ben, that, yeah. because you're not going to ask Banton and and Champagny to play the same position. So Champagny almost has it easier in his path to the yeah. NBA because he doesn't need to be a creator, whereas Banton absolutely mm-hmm. will. Exactly, right? So that's that's where why we're a little bit further looking further ahead on Banton, even though, because people are trashing on Banton in our chat and Twitter that he's saying he's bad and all that. He's not there yet. We're playing him at point guard position. I know that's his, his label position in college, but people had him going undrafted. That's a, he's a project in the Raptors development system. They could definitely get the most out of him, but this is a video on Champagny. And as you said, he's a bit fur- more further along there. And I think of the Toronto Raptors obviously deal with some injury situations like any team does throughout the course of a season. He'd be a nice spot player to come in and do the things we're sort of expecting from Wainwright, who is on a multi-year deal and is trying to earn minutes himself. But as you mentioned, Riker, he's not necessarily the build for a guy that can immediately come in and play the power forward position, the the position he was playing in college. He's going to need to develop some of those guard S skills, being an undersized guy that... You know, sure, the hustle is going to be important. We know what high hustle guards do for a roster. They can be an integral piece to a team, but they also need to do the other things that can keep them on the court, whether it be shooting, passing, creating. And it definitely looks like he's not one of those guys that look very stiff, right? Very, because there's a lot of guys in the league that you can just tell. They don't have that sort of rhythm, that sort of movement to really grow at that that ability, right? There would be a lot of effort, a lot of work put into him. He looks like a guy that's that's pretty smooth out there, especially even with the jump shot. The form doesn't look busted. He's he's a high energy guy. I, I think in a Toronto Raptor system, those skills might be able to come quicker for a guy like Champagny. And Riker, one thing I also want to bring up too. You know, you're bringing him in. Maybe it's an investment. We're seeing what... What brothers have been doing across the NBA, the Ball brothers, Jello Ball, we're putting a, Josh is putting up a video on uh, Courtside Digest, uh, I have to upload it, so it'll, oh, it would have went up yesterday, so check that out, because we're, we're a day ahead on this video, but uh, got brothers there, Dante Decumbos, they, three of them, they all just won an NBA championship, and Champendi has a twin brother that puts up almost the same stats playing at St. John's in uh, in college basketball. They're saying that if, he, if his brother, you know, if they're not the same level, the brother might even be better. So, you know, if we get one twin and he balls out, maybe that's like an investment in a in another one going forward, Riker. Well, it could go the other side. Uh, Philip Scrub, was it? And didn't the Scrubs have two brothers? They played Carlton basketball. They were Mm -hmm. an absolute dynasty in the OUA, the Ontario University Athletics Association. I I don't really know. I just know that they were a powerhouse. And then one of the Scrubs did have a summer league with Toronto Raptors, if I remember. Mm -hmm. And they made the comments. They said, this guy's one of the most polished to play skill-wise in the summer league just doesn't have the athleticism to keep up. Doesn't seem to be the concern with Champagny. Obviously, it's always easier to get an athletic guy and develop yeah. a bit of a shot, a smoother jump. Well, not always. It's the case of the, so- the young socialite Ben Simmons. It's usually easier to develop a shot than it is to develop athleticism and feel for the game and movement like you brought up, which is especially impressive considering that this guy was playing power forward, a traditionally kind of slow, bang it down low in the post position where if you're having to move out along the perimeter, play off ball, move off of off screens, you know, it's not guaranteed that it's going to transition well, which it did. So my laundry is ready. So <laughs> I, I'm again, I'm pretty excited for this guy. I don't suspect that he's going to be able to crack the roster in this first season, but expect to see him develop alongside Delano Banton and mm-hmm. Hey Ben, He's from New York City, Brooklyn native, Cole, Cole Anthony. There's a ton of basketball. I don't have any anybody else off the cuff that was born in New York, but they're known for street Kareem. ball. They're known for, for movement. 
Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Sham God. So Sham God. <laughs> Who's Sham God? Yeah, you know, it's a uh, you know, New York culture. Oh, that that move was developed in New York. No, and Sham God's the, the guy that did it. He's the guy that invented it. Oh. <laughs> oh, his, his actual street ball name was Sham God? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, you're the one that always oh, busts wow. out the Sham God and pick up games, right? You got to be on top of uh, this basketball knowledge, but yeah. Oh, Melo's actually from New York, is he? Yeah. Yeah, Melo's there. Okay. Kemba Walker's That should have been there. an easy one. So it's... Okay. Yeah, you're the Knicks guy, Rick. You gotta, you're gotta. you slacking on your... Oh, your I'm a Knicks fan. I don't, I don't know people's place of birth. <laughs> get a, you got the WNBA facts. They've been slacking on the podcast record. The the places of birth. That's a new... new, Maybe a little trend. Little things we got to sneak into the podcast. But yeah. Champagne, definitely a player to watch over this year's summer league we'll definitely keep our eye on him and should be an interesting player to look, have a look out for obviously wainwright you know, sam decker i think these are forward-esque players that are probably going to be higher up in the rotation starting off but obviously with nick nurse you never know what's going to happen you never know who's going to end up getting run who's going to get those opportunities and for a guy that hustles a guy that gets that many rebounds at his height definitely a promising career ahead of him for the toronto raptors but you guys are the best for making this far. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, all that cool stuff. Riker, do you have any last words on Champagne coming in and balling out for this team? Hopefully he does play because people want to. They are already saying it in the live stream. Pop the Champagne. So mm -hmm. that would be a good, easy, probably, uh, what do you call them? Or animation, an animation worthy slogan. So hopefully he does squeak up into the regular roster, man. Yeah, without a doubt. Anyways. Cheers. <laughs>